Solway. In this video, we're going to learn about the uses of the ablative case. So up to this point, we've talked about three cases, the nominative, genitive, and accusative. The most basic use of the nominative is for subjects of sentences. The genitive is most basically used to indicate possession, but it can indicate various other things as well. And the accusative is most commonly used for direct objects. The grammatical construction that we're going to focus on in this video is the prepositional phrase. Prepositions are words such as in, on, near, with, words like that. They often indicate location, but can do other things as well. Now with any preposition, you'll also see an object of the preposition, i.e. the word that follows it. Here we have some sample prepositional phrases. So in the phrase in the water, the preposition is in, whereas the object of the preposition is water. In the other examples, these are the prepositions, whereas these are the objects of the prepositions. In Latin, objects of prepositions will either be in the accusative or the ablative case, and it generally just depends on the preposition. For example, ad means to or towards and is followed by the accusative. So, to the town would be ad opidum. Ab means away from and is followed by the ablative. So, away from the town would be ab opido. And actually, these two phrases demonstrate one general rule about prepositions in Latin. Prepositions that tell you where you're going will be followed by an accusative. Like the prepositions ad, per, and trans. On the other hand, prepositions that tell you where you're coming from will be followed by the ablative, like the prepositions ab, ex, and de. However, prepositions that tell you where you are can actually go either way. So let's look at the preposition in, a Latin preposition, but it means the same thing in English, and this will help us demonstrate this pattern. This preposition is a bit unusual in that it can be followed by an ablative or an accusative depending on the situation. Most prepositions just take one or the other, but not both. With this preposition, the case that follows it tells us how to translate it. If we get the phrase in aquam, we have an accusative. So it's going to tell us where we're going. So in aquam means into the water. However, if we have the phrase in aqua, then it's followed by an ablative, and it's not telling us where we're going anymore. Here it tells us where we are. So this means in the water instead. Okay, so we have ablative after prepositions. That's not too hard to understand. Latin teachers have given names to these various uses of the ablative to help indicate what's going on in the sentence. So here's an example. The ablative of place where tells us, obviously, where something is happening. It generally shows up with the prepositions in, which we have just discussed, and also with sub, which means under or below. We might get the phrase in opido parua habitamus. So here is our prepositional phrase, and this sentence means we live in a small town. The ablative of place where tells us where we live. No problem. Okay, next. The ablative of place from which tells us where we're coming from and usually shows up with the preposition our ab, which means away from, a and x meaning out of, and de meaning down from. So in the phrase ex opido ambulamus, we have our prepositional phrase here. And this means we are walking out of the town. And by the way, a and ab, e and x have multiple forms that you can see here. They work like the words a and an in English, in that you use an a or an a before words that start with consonants, whereas you use ab and x before words that start with vowels. So we would see ex opido for out of the town, because opido starts with a vowel, whereas we would see a campo for out of the field, because campo starts with a consonant. Okay, another use of the ablative is the ablative of accompaniment, telling us whom we are with. It shows up with the word cum, meaning with, and also sine, meaning without. So, 
In the phrase cum amicis ambulamus, we have our prepositional phrase here, and this means we are walking with our friends. And by the way, the sentence doesn't specifically say the word our, but it can be inferred and added in English. So hopefully you're thinking that this isn't so bad. Well, there's more. Very often in Latin, the preposition will be omitted, and you'll have to figure out what to add. To help with this, here's a list of English prepositions that will usually do the job with, by, in, on, during, at, than, and from. If you see an ablative without a preposition, you'll generally be able to add one of these to translate it, and it will work. We also have names for all these different uses, so let's see those as well. First, the ablative of manner tells us how someone is doing something. It, it usually uses the preposition cum, which means with, but that cum can be omitted, and it still works. So in the phrase magna cum ira pugnant, Here's the prepositional phrase, and this means, they fight with great anger. Now, as I said, the cum can be omitted, so it could just be magna ira pugnant, and it would mean exactly the same thing. Next one, the ablative of means or instrument. It tells us what tool a person is using to accomplish something. It never uses a preposition, so we'll generally add the word with. So in the phrase saxo magno discipulum oprimo, we have our ablative over here. And this means I am crushing a student with a large rock. Next one, the ablative of time when. Again, no preposition. Then we might add in, on, at, or during, whichever one makes sense in the situation is fine. So, in the phrase, quarta ora navigabimus, our ablative is over here. This means we will sail at the fourth hour. By the way, navigabimus is a future tense form. We haven't seen those yet. Also, the Romans considered sunrise to be the start of the new day. So if they said at the fourth hour, what that would mean to them is four hours after sunrise. Next, the ablative of time within which. No preposition in Latin, so we'll generally add the word within. So we have something like quatuor oris navigabimus. The ablative phrase is right here, and this means we will sail within four hours. Okay, next. The ablative of separation. No preposition, and we'll generally add the word from to make this work. Our example is populum pericolo liberamus. The ablative is pericolo here, and this means we are freeing the people from danger. Next. The ablative of comparison, which as the name would imply, is used to compare things. No preposition, and since we're drawing comparisons, we will add the word than. So if we get the phrase plus scientiae magistro abeo, the ablative is magistro right here, and this means I have more knowledge than the teacher. Next one is the ablative of respect, also referred to as the ablative of specification, same thing. It tells us about someone or something's characteristics. No preposition, and we usually add the word in, so we can get something like this, Graeci sapientia praecedunt. Our ablative is over here. Praecedunt is a form of the verb praecedere, which means to excel, so this means the Greeks excel in wisdom. All right, next one, the ablative of cause. No preposition, and we will often add the word from to get this to work. So we see a phrase like, inopia kibi laboramus. Inopia is our ablative. The verb laborare means to work, but it can also mean to suffer, which is gonna make more sense here. So this means, we are suffering from a lack of food. 
Okay, and the next one we'll talk about actually isn't an ablative at all. This is the accusative of duration of time. This tells us how long something takes place. Now, like most of these ablatives that we've seen, it doesn't have a preposition, but it'll always contain some unit of time, like hours or days or years. So if we see a phrase like decem horas laborant, our accusative of duration of time is over here, and this means they work for 10 hours. Okay, so that is our introduction to the uses of the ablative case plus one random use of the accusative case. This isn't every use of the ablative, but these are the most common ones, so understanding these is a very good start. Let me know if you have any questions. Wale.